And now it's time for our guest speaker. And I'm going to read to you from her bio that she submitted. She said, Hope Johnson is devoted to the spirit in a way that allows her to be free from thinking that she's capable of doing anything on her own. She seeks the advice of spirit to interpret meaning to her mind before making any decisions or coming to any conclusions. Hope has been in the role of spiritual teacher since 2014, and she currently offers, offers her teachings twice a week both locally and online via Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. So we're delighted to have her here today, and I know you're welcoming her from home, Hope Johnson. Aloha. Hooray, everyone. Thank you so much. Today we're celebrating Mother's Day, and I love what's been spoken so far. Wow. I'm here to express to you how to nurture the innocence. This is a very motherly thing, and you know, like it's been said, we're all mothers in this way. We're all mothers. We're here to nurture the innocence back to a childlike way of being, free as a child. You know, as we go through life, we pick up on all these different conditionings, all these different thoughts and meaning that's given to the world. These are the world's laws. These are the world's laws. That, in, that includes the laws of money, finances, nutrition, health, relationships, everything. God is love. And each of us is created as God, as love. We've never deviated from that. We've never deviated. We think we have. That's why it seems like we can make mistakes. It seems like we're capable on of acting on our own. And it seems like we've made mistakes, doesn't it? It seems like. But just because you can view something doesn't mean it's true. And all that's going on here, all that's going on in a worldly image that we see is deception. It's as if the separation really happened is it's as if there's something other than love. It's as if there's something other than God. See, perception isn't meaningful. And everything that you see, everything that you know, everything that you remember about yourself and about other people, it's all perception. It's all meant to show you that the separation is real because that's what you wanted it to do. It's all meant to reveal through deception that the lie of separating from God really happened. And this brings on a sense of shame. This brings on a sense of shame. You can detect it in the tone, see? In order to see, in order to see, you must be able to feel. It could be said that God comes through your heart. God comes through the heart. And the whole body is an extension of the heart. The heart is the first thing that's formed. And the whole body is an extension of that. So you could say that God speaks to you through your heart. And there's a tone that comes through. With every thought, with every breath, there's a tone that comes through. And it's either a tone that resonates with the spirit or a tone that resonates with the ego. You can sense it. Your consciousness senses it, whether you know it or not, in your body's energy field. 
And either your mind is being taught that you're one with love or that you're something else. That something else is not love. That something else is a thought. That you are apart from love. It's as if there's darkness in ourselves. As if. But like I said, just because we're viewing darkness doesn't make it real. There's only light, which is love. You could say the light is your awareness of love. When your awareness of love is given to the world, the world heals. The world truly is awakening in your mind. Not out there. You know, my sister called me this morning when I was on my way over here, and she told me, you know, I just see all these people suffering. There's so many people suffering over this COVID thing right now. And I myself, I can't afford to pay my bills because I, I haven't been working. And I don't see any work in sight, and I don't know what I'm going to do. See, notice the tone that comes through. It's as if you are something that you're not. It's as if you need money to eat. I know it looks like that, guys. I know. It looks like you need money to even eat or do anything. It's not a fact. It's not a fact. It's a fallacy. That's a fallacy, OK? Money is a manifestation of the same mind that makes it look like it's scarce. It's all based on this thought of separation. You know, if you're given something, like say you're given the, uh, the experience that, oh, there might not be enough money. Hooray! That's your special purpose. That's your special purpose right now. Oh, there may not be enough money. What's the tone? What's coming through? Is this, is this an expression of the shameful thought that you separated yourself from reality, from God? Or is this tone an expression of the truth? See, if you're not sure, if you're not sure what's true, check in. Check in with your heart. I've heard people say they don't feel their heart. I don't feel my heart. Okay, well, the whole body is an extension of the heart. Pinch yourself. And then your attention goes to the sensation where you're pinching yourself. Can you feel that? Most people can feel that. Any sensation, any sensation. You don't have to be a practiced yogi. No. Once you start directing your attention to sensation away from the thought that says, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay the bills? And to the sensation, your mind is learning that that thought is meaningless, which it is. And you know, you could say, the angels are rejoicing in that moment. The angels are rejoicing. You know why? Because your innocence is being nourished by that. Your innocence is being nourished every time there's a space in those thought processes that are playing out from a sense of concern, from a sense of how can I pay the bills, can come the greatest relief. And all that takes is, like I said, willingness, turn the attention. Will you let the attention turn? See? Nothing's happening. That changes the whole storyline. That changes the whole narrative. Because now no one's doing anything to me. Now there's not an idea that I have to work hard to try to get myself back to where I was financially or physically or anything like that. 
And when we have this perception of suffering, of other people suffering, that was another thing that my sister was going, wow, other people suffering. You know, I tend to get myself wrapped up in it. Okay, here's why there's getting wrapped up in other people suffering. Because it seems to be other people suffering. It's not other people. The perception that you have of another person is coming from your mind. You could say it's projected, the first manifestation, projected through the body's energy field. So the, having the perception of a suffering person is within your dominion. It doesn't mean anything about you. It's meaningless. And the reason you have the perception of it is because you can allow it to be healed. All suffering is already healed, really. But you can allow for the healing in your mind, that thought of separation. See? With the whole world coming out of your body's energy field like that, it gives you complete dominion. And when you live like that, nothing can harm you. You don't live as if something can hurt you. And, it, and you don't live as if people can offend you. Watch when you get offended. That's a guilty concept too. It's so fun. I love it. I love getting offended. It's one of my favorites. Thank you if I feel offended by you. <laughs> my goodness. Thank you for showing me that energy. Thank you for showing me that reaction. There's nothing that the person there has done. There's nothing, there's, no, there's not really a person there. We're making an interpretation with our brain to interpret a person there so that it can bring up a sense of separation see and I want that when it comes I want that it's not like oh get that person away from me it's like oh thank you and as soon as it goes to gratitude and it goes to appreciation that's where healing is taking place see so where there's a willingness to go to that where there's a willingness to go to the gratitude you're shown exactly how to get there the spirit guides. It's a guidance in thought. There's a totally different interpretation to everything. There's a completely different free interpretation. It frees you from bondage. And you know what? The effects of it are immediate. The effects are immediate. It takes place immediately. As soon as you're willing to receive the spirit's guidance, there's an upliftment. There's an upliftment. And you can also see by other people's reactions to you. Are they reacting to you with joy? Or is, or is it something else? Is their reaction something else? This is not to make you feel guilty. This is not a guilty thing. You know. Either way, a person reacts to me in joy, or they, they react to me with, I don't know. <gasps> I can't believe you're doing that. Either way, it's like gratitude. And in the joy, I celebrate with them. When they react to me in joy, I celebrate with them. When they react to me in some kind of pain or something, it's an awareness for me. It's an awareness for me to nurture that innocence that's within. Not to feel bad about myself. That's the way the ego might want to take it to feel bad, you know. If there's a bad feeling, wonderful, that's for allowing the compassion in. But it's not to make ourselves feel bad in thought. It's not to make ourselves into something, oh, I should have known better. Oh, I've heard it a million times, I really should have known better. It's not for that. You could say that that thought in itself is an opportunity. There's a feeling that comes along with, oh, I screwed up. Wonderful. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. Every idea that there has been a mistake, 
presents an opportunity. Watch. Watch how the ego tries to teach you that you actually did make a mistake. Watch how the ego will lead your thoughts to analyze yourself. So you can come to a conclusion, whether you're innocent or guilty, that's really not the kind of innocence I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the kind of innocence that comes from evaluation. To nurture that innocence takes seeing that the innocence that you are cannot possibly be anything else. It cannot possibly turn to anything else because there's no action. There's no action taking place. There's no doing. The mind is putting together a scene that we're viewing. And for the ego, whatever you view, it's up for evaluation. And for the ego, you tend to evaluate other people as well. Maybe evaluate their ego. What are they after? You know, a suspiciousness even. What are they after? Remember, this is about you. This is about you. When you're talking about someone else, when you're thinking about someone else, what do they want from me? It's about you. So how do you nurture the innocence within that? How do you nurture the innocence? Admit that you made it up. They're not like that. We see no one clearly. If we saw them clearly, it would be more like beams of light. Can do no wrong. Can do nothing wrong. And for me, you know, that's really the heart of the mother. I know with my own children, and I see the world as my child, when it seems as if someone has screwed up, someone is in their ego, for instance, I know who it's talking about. I know who it's talking about because I can feel it. It does not engender joy. It's something else. So in knowing who it's talking about, there can be this allowance for compassion. And that's the true forgiveness. The true forgiveness is not making it as if there is an error in a person, in self or another. It's not making it as if there is an error in the person that needs to be corrected. It's listening, willingness to be shown, where the error is in your mind that can be corrected right now. And you get an, an instant manifestation of relief. It's an instant release. Now, the ego will put up a lot of blocks to that. There's a lot of defensiveness to knowing this. There's huge defensiveness to knowing this because if you could just keep that guilt projecting, this world can remain, and the ego's very afraid of that. They're very afraid of you knowing what upholds this world. It's projecting. If we can keep the projecting up, it saves the ego's life. So the ego puts up lots of defensiveness against this, lots of defensiveness to even hearing this. See? So it's th looking through that defensiveness and watching how you feel because that's where you're being shown. It's through the body's energy field. So watch how you feel. And if it feels like it's something other than joy, would you be willing to admit you made a mistake? Would you just be willing to admit you made a mistake in thinking? And that's all. No other mistake. No other mistake but thinking, I got it wrong. If I feel less than joyful, I got it wrong. Yay! <laughs> that means it's going to change. 
That means a change is coming. Because as soon as there is an admittance, oh, that's the thought of separation. It can only be because joy seems to be missing. It can only be the thought of separation. And if there's no judgment about yourself for having thought in separation, there's just a willingness to know, oh, I don't like how this feels. This is other than joy. Then the correction can be made. And when the correction is made, it's immediate. You know it. You know the correction has been made. It's like the mind's been purified. And now you feel uplifted. And as that's offered, as that's offered in all of your day-to-day -day interactions, in everything that seems to come up, someone maybe seems to slight you or something like that, that's a healing. It's a healing opportunity. It seems like, oh, it's so heavy. Everyone's suffering. I don't have money. That's a healing. It's a healing opportunity again. The mind is putting this world together, moment to moment. Nothing is happening. And that's why, that's why, it's because nothing is happening that everything that occurs to us can be used right now for healing. And when it's all completely healed, when the mind is totally purified, there's no separation kind of vibe at all. There's no separation kind of vibe. That means we don't perceive things like sickness, like any kind of control, like aging. We don't go to the bathroom, these kinds of things. See? We made it all up. And that's what the ego is afraid of losing, because to the ego, there's nothing else. There's nothing beyond this world that's spinning stories. Stories, stories, stories. These stories will lighten up, too, as more of us come to see where the world is coming from, because that kindness just comes out automatically. It's just expressed automatically, even in situations where it seems like unkindness is deserved. And the world changes to show that. The world changes to reflect that. And when the world changes like that, eventually it's moving back to truth. But for each one of us as individualized creations of the mind, creations of God, as individualized creations of God, the world is awakening within us. And it's in our dominion. Mahalo. Aloha.